So that proves that you had different Israelites that had different beliefs. So Apollos didn't have everything together. And you know Priscilla had to be in order. Then there's no way. He was a Jew. That's probably, probably the tribe of Judah. That was probably a Judite woman. Yeah. She had to be in complete order to go on the road with him and not want to, you know, stay in one place. You know, you know put you know put your uh, anchor down. You know, build the farm, build a vineyard. You know, get comfortable. She's one. She wanted the other elect. That's after the same left, but she was traveling uh, with him. Women want to you know, be comfortable, you know. So the scripture, scripture tells you about the elect lady. Well, Priscilla more than likely, uh, Aquila and Priscilla. Priscilla was more than likely one of the elect. So there's more. Uh, yeah, that was it. Schoolmaster. Or, I, I can finish the, the chapter. Gone. It says, Acts chapter 18 and 27, and when and when he was dis uh, disposed to pass into Achaia. The brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through grace. Through grace. This is a free uh, gift that the believers receive. All right. Go ahead. Verse 28. Which is used to increase your knowledge in how to serve the Lord, right? how to conduct yourself in the faith. Go ahead. Acts 18 and 28, it says, For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, shown by the scriptures that Yahweh Shai was a Mashiach. Yeah. By, the, by what? By the laws and the prophets. <laughs> That's what he used. That's what they used. They quote the scrolls out the law and the prophets. And the theme is what? Israel. Okay? <laughs> that was a theme throughout the laws and the prophets. So when he was reading the laws and the prophets about how Israel was going to be recovered, Behold, the king shall reign in righteousness and the princes shall rule in judgment. You had Apollos out there saying that. Aquila out there saying that. Timothy, uncircumcised Israelites out there preaching that about Israel. They were because they were Israelites. How are they going to be preaching about people that doesn't got nothing to do with them? The uncircumcised Israelites. Timothy, uh, uh, Trophimus, right. Apollos. Well, he was a Jew. I think Timothy was a Get uh, Acts 16 and 1. That's where Timothy comes in. God, so this Acts 16 and 1. It says, Then came he to Derby and Lystra. Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named uh, Timotheus. So he was an uncircumcised Israel. If he's, if he's a Jew, he would argue so. But no, it's not necessarily true, but more, more than likely he would be circumcised. So he's an uncircumcised Israel. So probably the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, Levi. In that land, Lushka, go ahead, Derby. Go ahead. Said, and behold, the certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was uh, a Jewess, and, be, and believed, but, but his father was a Greek. Yeah, he was an uncircumcised Israelite. Then raised the customs of the Greeks. Go ahead. Con kind of says Acts chapter 16 and 2, which was well well reported of by the by the brethren that were at Lystra and uh, Iconium. Yeah, well reported of what? For, for believing in the Lord. Go ahead. It says verse 3, him not will not for being a heathen. Con. It says him will Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were uh, which were in those quarters. Right, because he's an uncircumcised Israelite. You circumcise Israelite. You don't circumcise fucking heathens. It's not in their culture. It's not in their customs. Can we look up circumcised? Yeah, because you, you had the circumcision that, that uh, weren't believers saying, well, look, we, you got to be circumcised to be saved. Okay? Okay, look, we know he's an Israelite, but look, he ain't even fucking circumcised. You got circumcised. You got to circumcise this guy. You know? So he took him down to circumcise. Because right, he was an Israelite. What? Circumcised? Yeah, so the Greek word is paratimo or paratemno, which means to cut around, cut off one's uh, preface, use of that well known right by which not only the male children of the Israelites on the eighth day after birth, but subsequently also proselytes, a righteousness, 
were consecrated to Yahweh. Well, he was considered a proselyte. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I guess, so, so wait a minute. If I thought circumcision don't mean nothing. <laughs> so the proselytes were getting circumcised. So read that again. That's a heavy uh, the spirit right there. Gone. It that goes to prove that the circumcision was being done for the Israelites that, that believed in the Lord, that were uncircumcised. Because that's, that's an Israelite custom. Go ahead. God, it says, cut off one's purpose, use of that well-known right by which not only the male children of the Israelites on the eighth day after birth, but subsequently also proselytes of righteousness were consecrated to Yahweh and introduced. Also proves that they were keeping the law. Go ahead. And That's introduced. Go ahead. God, it says, were consecrated to Yahweh and introduced into the number of, the, of his people. It also says, to give oneself circumcised, present oneself to be circumcised, receive circumcision. Since by the right of circumcision, a man was separated from the un unclean world and dedicated to the Most High. There you go, circumcised. Right. So that was a physical circumcision, and you have to also have a spiritual circumcision. That's right. right. But, but you're circumcised spiritually before you get circumcised physically. So the proselytes were getting circumcised. All right. We need uncircumcised Israelites. So read uh, that account about the schoolmaster. <clears throat> Galatians 3 and 24. It say, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Hamashiach, that we might be justified by faith. Right. Look up uh, schoolmaster. So that word for schoolmaster in the Greek is paidagogos. And it says, a, t a tutor, a guardian, a god of boys. Among the Greeks and the Romans, the name was applied to trustworthy slaves who were charged with the duty of supervising the life and morals of boys belonging to the better class. Yeah, the better class. So supervision to keep you within the confines. What one of them confines was? Get circumcised. So the proselytes were circumcised. That's right. Read the, uh, the English. Uh, just read, read the verse again. You know? So you can't say, oh... You don't gotta get circumcised. Well, the, the, the Israelites that were coming in, that were of, that were adopted the Greco-Roman customs, were getting circumcised, and, they, and there's the evidence for it. Right? It wasn't just you came and you just believed, and that was it. You had, you had to put, you had, you had to keep the laws. No, you had, they kept the laws. Some of them kept the laws, and as they evolved, they kept more of the law. But that was a practice amongst the uncircumcised Israelites with uncircumcision. All right. Amongst the people that were scattered throughout Asia, Asia Minor, they were getting circumcised. Uh, read read the, the verse again. Con. So it says, Acts chapter 16 and 3, Him will Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters. For they knew, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. Yeah, so they knew that his father didn't circumcise him. That's, that's what it means. You know, his father didn't circumcise him. Huh? It doesn't mean he was actually a, a seed of Japheth or Esau. That means he was a seed of Israel, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and he was uncircumcised because of the Hellenistic, uh, the Ptolemies and the Seleucians. They, they uh, Hellenized him. They, uh, they didn't circumcise their children. Huh? So uh, Paul took uh, Timothy, or Timotheus, to be circumcised. Because he was a, a, a proselyte, Israelite, uncircumcised Israelite that believed. All right, so he had to put the anesthesia on his on the area, numbed him up, and Paul was an expert with the blade, and he circumcised his uh, foreskin of his, of his penis. And that's a contract. It goes back to Genesis 17. So you spiritually uh, circumcise first, and then you get physically circumcised as you uh, get deeper into the faith. You're a male. So read, act, uh, go to uh, Genesis 17 about the, the law of circumcision. All right, and then you go back and read the, uh, the definition of circumcision. I believe it uh, says eight days old to be uh, circumcised. Genesis 17 chapter. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, thou, thou shalt be a God in me. You, you'll be my God in Genesis 17 and 9. And Yahweh said unto Abraham, 
Thou shalt keep my covenant therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. Timothy went through that ritual. What? And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house or brought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. What? And he that, he that is born in so thy even, house. So even the servants got to be circumcised. What? He that is born in thy house, and he that is brought with thy money, must must needs be circumcised. What? And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. What? And the uncircumcised man-child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He had broken my covenant. What? And Yahweh said unto Abraham, As for uh, Sarah thy wife, thou shalt not uh, call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall her name be. Read, read up where you started at. Uh, we'll read a little, a little far, farther up. It says uh, that you should, uh, that I should be a God unto you. Uh, I'll be your God. It says okay. that a few verses yeah. up. It says, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It says, and verse, we'll start at verse 5. It's saying, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Yeah. Abram means exalted father, and Abraham means father of many. Good. Say, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Yep. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Yeah, so uh, the, so that, that's a covenant that we entered into through Abraham. All right? So it proves that the, uh, the converts that were uncircumcised kept the law, all right, was the example of the definition the brother brought up. Timothy being a prime example. I believe that's the first only account that we displayed of an uncircumcised Israelite being circumcised. Right? They think, oh, he's a kind of Greek or something. He was circumcised because they were keeping the law. They want you to reject the laws. They were keeping the law. Now Acts 15 does talk about that they got to stay from staying from blood and from things strangled, etc. But that's that's just for like that's the bait that's the very basic things that you can keep. Right? But when you got deeper into the faith, you kept more of the laws. Right? Circumcision is one of them. Alright? What proves it? is Timothy, all right? And that there was a practice of the converts to get circumcised, all right? That was a practice of, of the converts, all right? So the, the world believes that, oh, the converts weren't Israel, they weren't Jews. We believe they were Jews. Either way, they would get circumcised. They were keeping them, that, that proved they were keeping the laws. Isn't, aren't there a lot easier laws to keep than to cut, cut the skin off your penis? So if they were keeping that law, they definitely were keeping other laws. They were, they were going to the, the high holy days. They were observing the Sabbath. Right? They were keeping the dietary laws. If they would go so far as to cut skin off their penis, they, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, I'm extrapolating, that they were keeping other laws also. Right? So read the account and then read the definition again. Con, so this Acts chapter 16 and 3, him will Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was the Greek. Yeah, so he was uncircumcised. Right. Getting that Greek word for circumcised is peritemno, which means uh, peritemno, peritemno, which means cut off one's preface, use of that well-known right by which not only the male children of the Israelites on the eighth day after birth, but subsequently also proselytes of righteousness were consecrated to Yahweh and introduced into the number of his people. It also says, since by the right of circumcision a man was separated from the unclean world and dedicated to the Most High, the word is transferred to denote the extinguishing of lust and the removal of sins. 
Go back to read your proselytes again. Gone. It says, cut off one's preface, use of that well known right by which not only the male children of the Israelites on the eighth day after birth, but subsequently also the proselytes of righteousness. Proselytes of righteousness. Yep. Well, those are, those are, the Jew, are the Jews that were uncircumcised, that became uncircumcised through uh, the Greek, the uh, Macedonian Greeks. Right. Yeah. Because they weren't Greek, they were, they were fucking Macedonian. Yeah, and getting that word for proselyte, meaning a person who has converted from one opinion, religion, or party to another. It also says a Gentile who, who was who has converted to well, it says right here, uh, Judaism, right, which is the, uh, keeping the, the faith and the laws of the Israelites. You can say that. Right, again, Acts, tw Acts twenty-eight and uh, twenty-three, and again, where it uh, starts the. Uh, Give me any scribe which is instructing the kingdom of heaven, uh, bringing forth out of his treasures things new and old. Is that 13? Acts 28 and 23. It say, and when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of Yahweh, persuading them concerning Yahweh Shai, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. And contrary to popular belief, that's what the Israelites and the proselytes that got circumcised, that's where they were going around uh, preaching with, with the, with, the, with the scrolls and the laws and the prophets. And every time you read the laws and the prophets, you always read about the Israelites because they were reading about themselves. The reason why they were in that condition is because they went off and serving the Lord. So they were reading out the laws and the prophets. The laws and the prophets have everything to do with the Israelites. 100%. Okay. Persuading them out of the law to read it again. Verse uh, Acts 28 and 23. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of Yahweh, persuading them concerning Yahweh Shai, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. From morning till evening. So we're yeah, so to restore again the kingdom to Israel. All right, what did I tell you again? Uh, Matthew chapter 13 and 52. Yeah, it was, yeah, it says, Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. Yeah, which is what just read, the laws of the prophets. I think they were written before time, written for our learning. You get in the church, the scriptures where it says, uh, any scribe which is instructing the kingdom of heaven. Look up uh, scribe. God. Scribe. What does a scribe do? From what I remember, a scribe is someone that searches the scripture to find out pro about prophecies. And they, they record and they write every time you say scribe. So the they count. They count for God. It says the Greek word for scribe is grandma. Uh, Grandma Yose, which means in the Bible, a man learned in the Mosaic law and in the sacred writings, an interpreter, teacher, scribes ex uh, examined the more difficult and subtle questions of the law, added to the Mosaic law, decisions of various kinds, thought to uh, elucidate. Yes, yeah, so that's what a scribe did. It searched the scriptures that any scribe was instructed into the kingdom of heaven. Scroll full five his treasures, things new and old. So a scribe had to search the scrolls. And that's what they went around with. And every time you search the scrolls, it's always Israel this, Israel that. I'm gonna do this good for you, I'm gonna destroy the nations. So what the hell you thought the, 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 the uncircumcised Israelites talking about? You're gonna destroy the fucking nations. You're gonna save Israel. What they were reading at, uh, at, uh, Isaiah 14. Yeah, read Isaiah 14. You got the uncircumcised Israelites going out onto the streets reading Isaiah 14 chapter. Why the hell are they talking we talk about they about themselves? They ain't talking about themselves. They know those are the Israelites. They got eventually many of them got circumcised. Right? That was a common practice. According to the history, that was a common practice of the proselytes to get circumcised. According to what we just read. Right? Timothy is a chief example. 
Acts 14 1? Not Acts 14, Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14 1. Isaiah 14 and 1 say, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Yeah, so he was saying, Okay, well, son, I'm, I'm uncircumcised Israelite. It tells you that I'm going to join to the house of Israel, to the circumcision. Right. David Bob is going out there reading that. Right. So he had to explain that the uh, uncircumcised Israelites had a right to come back in. Right, did you go, did you get the other, other precept I had? Uh, there's one law to them that is homeborn. Uh, yeah, yeah, read that. Read that. Uh, yeah, so, so when the Israelites went out and, and preached, the circumcision couldn't you know, talk shit about the uncircumcised Israelite because it's, it's in the law. So how are you going to reject the law? And the, and the law tells you that that's why Paul circumcised Timothy. And that's what gives the Israelites that were uncircumcised the right to, to return back to the faith, to their heritage. It's because of the law. So how the law is done away with. It's, it's fucking insane. Go ahead, read. Exodus 12 and 48. They say, and when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, Gar, and, will, yeah. and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. Right. And he shall be as one that is born in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. Right, that proves that the uh, Israelites had the ability to be uncircumcised. Because not all Israelites circumcised their children. Especially if they left the land, they may have decided uh, to lose their religion, so to speak. They moved to Greece, opened up a business in Greece, and down the line, generation after generation, you know, the grandson didn't circumcise his son. But the father did when he first got there. He circumcised him, but he didn't circumcise his son because he started adopting other customs. All right. So when they came back to the land, he had to make sure that they were right. They had to be circumcised. All right. So you can't partake in the Passover unless you're circumcised, technically. All right. All right. Is that it there? Did I tell you again, Humphrey? It's uh, it was another good definition well, too for scribe. More this? Yeah. Hey, go ahead. Verse 49, to say, one law shall be to him that is home born and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. Right, one law. That's what I really, really said. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, one law. So you can't say because he's uncircumcised, he's not allowed to come back. You're supposed to bring him in. He builds up a strength and a uh, faith, his spiritual uh, bank account, spiritual knowledge, and then he'll get circumcised. Israelites that are uncircumcised have the right to come back in. All right, through faith first. All right. And then eventually they'll get circumcised, especially if they're, if they're a prophet. Right. But the, ma the masses is a little more uh, liberal. You know? But with the, 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 the elect prophets, we held to a higher standard. Yeah. So I'll read it again. It says Matthew chapter 13 and 52. Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. And getting that definition in the Greek, it says, uh, getting to the point, it says, um, a religious teacher so instructed that from his learning and ability to teach, advantage may redound to the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, because the, the, the scribes and Pharisees knew that Yahweh Shai was the, was the guy because he fit, he fit the description. So they were, they were jealous. You know? And not all the scribes and Pharisees, Pharisees didn't uh, believe. Some of them were actual believers. You know? So when you're speaking to the masses, speaking to the scribes, like, look, you can search the scriptures and tell that I'm the guy. I'm Yahweh Shai was, was them. But they were experts. So they had no excuse. Like the... the uh, masses, they had somewhat of an excuse, even though they, they went to the, uh, the so-called church or whatever, so they, they knew about the prophecies, but the scribes, they were experts, so they had no, they knew exactly what, what the signs were going to be, you know? And the scriptures say that the Lord, the Lord God is a God that hideth himself. The, the prophecy is that he was born in uh, Bethlehem. Alright? That's why Nathaniel says, shall anything good come out of Nazareth? 
because he, he, he wasn't born in Nazareth. So he was even under that assumption, like, whoa, what the hell? He, he's from Nazareth. No, he was actually from Bethlehem. Give me an account where Daniel said that. So anything good come out of Nazareth? He wasn't, he wasn't born in Nazareth. He was born in Bethlehem. Let's see if we can find an account where, where he was born and how he got birth. Where it says Bethlehem too. Let's see what we got. So anything good come out of Nazareth? Can you give me that account? This is the book of John. Bethlehem, one. Judah. Yes, it was from Judah. 40, 45. They say Philip findeth Nathaniel and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in, in the law and the prophets did write, Yahweh of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Right. And Nathaniel said unto him, Can there any any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Yeah, so it's already uh, assumed, like, whoa, this they just do it from uh, Nazareth? Or at least he was raised in Nazareth? But they didn't but some they didn't know that he was born he wasn't he wasn't born in Nazareth, he was born in Bethlehem. You know, and you say that like I mean and the elders went into it a couple years ago that Nazareth was like a hood, like a fucked up city, like a uh, like a North Philly or like a Canada. Ghetto. So, like a can yeah. So you looked at it like he's from there? Like, how the fuck is this can't be that can't, this can't be a guy. He, he, he from Nazareth. Yeah, come and see. Alright, let me let me keep trying it out. They believe, but it was like so he, he's from Nazareth. No, he was but not from Nazareth. He was from Bethlehem. Just because he was raised there. Like I'm not where I'm where I was raised where, where I was uh born. I don't live where I was born or raised. I moved. So that don't, that don't mean I'm from where I'm currently located. So uh, are you telling me that right? Yeah. All right. You got the account? Yeah. Bethlehem? Kinda of says Matthew chapter two and one. Now when Yahweh was born in Bethlehem, or Bethlehem, of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Uh, keep reading? Or, yeah, that's... No, read, read again. Gone. It says, Matthew chapter 2 and 1, Now when Yahweh was born in Bethlehem, the house of bread, by Yahweh, look that up in Hebrew. But, uh, read it up here. Yup, it's, uh... Bayat Lacham, meaning, yeah, house of bread. And Yahweh Shai, we eat uh, the body of the Lord, the blood. So that's the, uh, consuming the whole roll, the whole, the whole bread and the wine. It's Yahweh Shai's body. We, 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 when we have the Passover, the unleavened bread represents the Lord's body. So we're eating the whole roll. So read that verse again. House of bread. Con. So it says, Matthew chapter 2 and 1. Now when Yahweh was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Right. So Yahweh was born in Bethlehem. Yeah. Right? Which means house of bread. Right? Yeah. By the way, it says a city in Judah, birthplace of David. So we'll, we'll close that up right there. One to many topics. Hope the lesson was edifying. Hope you, yes, John, the next uh, lesson. John, John.